YouTube, Big Daddy, Big Daddy Customs coming back at you with another quick video. I had to, well, you guys know I've been working on the 55 Pro Sportsman and um, I had some trouble with the cage, so I had to rebuild, I had to build another one. So uh, I'm going to put together a quick how-to video, or I guess how I did it video, on uh, building a, you know, just a basic cage for your model cars. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let me go ahead and jump into it and uh, I'll show you how I did it. Hey guys, Big Daddy back. Um, let's get started with the materials you're going to need to get this uh, cage rolling and um, to make your own cage for those, you know, those pro street cars or the, you know, the custom uh, the custom street cars that you see around and um, I know you, this is a big deal with uh, a lot of your pro street guys and um, and maybe you know even the like the SCCA cars or the uh, tuned out tuners you know the tuners like to put cages in the Civics and all that good stuff so um, what I used is two different sides of rod uh, styrene rod. I use the 1 16th for all the bracing and I use the 1 8th inch for the main hoop and I think yeah and for the two forward bars so um, there's that and this is a uh, solid rod um, so not the tubing. Uh, you're gonna need a measuring tool. Uh, you may need to use a protractor um, or you know like a small ruler. I have this one or if you guys have the Habico mats, the builder's mats with the uh, measurement, inc measuring increments on them, um, it does centimeters, millimeters, inches. So this comes, one of these comes in handy. If you don't have one, go ahead and snatch one up because these things are great and uh, they save your blades. Um, you're gonna need your trusty hobby knife. Now I didn't. This one here has a fresh blade, um, but the one I used was actually this one here which does not have a fresh blade and uh, I use this one because you know you cut it just like you cut aluminum but it's a soft plastic so you know it cuts a lot easier you don't have to take so much time a whole lot of pressure and you're gonna end up cleaning the ends of the sticks off with sandpaper anyway so or your file so, um, you know, you don't need to make the, you know, really, really perfect cuts. Because, like I said, you're just going to dust them off with sandpaper anyway. Uh, use a sanding stick. Or, well, this is a uh, uh, cheap nail files. Uh, I think I got a box of 20 for like a dollar and some change at the dollar store. You can buy these all day. Um, I used a round file that I got out of a kit I bought on eBay for fish mouthing the uh, ends of the sticks you know to kind of give it that curve so they'll mate up to your other tubes nicely and you get a good glue surface on them um, you're gonna need a marking utensil I prefer a pencil it doesn't have to be mechanical it could be lead or, or a, a wooden pencil whatever you guys use but it shows up really nicely on the styrene like I mean, if you guys can see that, it shows up nicely and it sands off really easily. So, um, as opposed to using like a Sharpie or a felt pen. And you're going to need your interior tub that you're working with, and naturally, you're going to need the body of the car that you're working with. So, with all that in mind, let me go ahead and start segment one. Alright, guys, here to start segment one. Um, Obviously, the place you want to begin is with your measurements. Um, with the sticks aside, you want to measure your the width of your interior tub, the length of your interior tub, and if you're going to have crossbars, you want to determine where those are going to go, how they're going to sit, stuff like that. Um, my rear my rear uh, support bars go to about the top of this sub box here. Uh, here, let me get a 
let me get a pointer for you guys here. Um, my rear bars go to about here, okay? Uh, so the front bars go to the corner of the floorboard, where the floorboard and the front firewall meet. Um, and also you have to take into consideration whether this car is going to have interior panels like this one. Um, because you have to take into account this measurement here, okay? So you want to measure from here, from this interior panel to this one, and from the base of this panel where it's going to meet the floor to the roof, okay? Um, so after you've gotten those measurements and you wrote them down, um, then you can start your main hoop. Alright guys, segment one. Like I said, measuring, okay? After you've got your measurements done, you want to take your... I use my larger stick for the main hoop because it is the main support for the cage. Um, so I have my... I had mine measured already and I've already made my cage, okay? Um, so I'm not going to actually do this um, because this and... These pieces right here are the last pieces of styrene rod that I have left. So I can't actually make another one in front of you guys right now and I apologize for that. But I can show you how to do it. Alright. So as a matter of fact I'll start with my short tube here. Alright. So with this styrene rod you don't want to just go and bend it all at once. Okay. What you want to do is you get your measurement, your height measurement, mark it, and then when you go to bend it, what I call a cold bend, uh, is you just kind of work it until it starts to do what you want to do. Okay, this is already previously bent, of course, but you just want to kind of work it little by little until it starts to do what you want to do, okay, and you get the form that you want. All right, you do that to one side, get it straight and you get your measurement all the way over to the other corner and you bend the other one okay like I said it won't be this easy because it's mine has already been done so and you get your shape like this okay now mine is a little straighter on top the corners are a little more angled but you get the idea so oh and I also forgot you're gonna need a tape um, you're gonna need masking tape now for you guys that have angle gauges, uh, angle gauges work great because what you can do is you can set the, the angle of the gauge, okay, and you bend it inside that angle gauge and you tape this one, this side to one side and the top to the other, okay, and if you have two that's even better because you can double up and you can get that tape down, alright, all I did was take the tape and wrap it around the base and hold it and if you have a way to heat it up like with a uh, hair dryer heat it up with a hair dryer and let it air cool and when you pull that tape off the soup is going to stay like that okay so you do that get your shape tape it down let it sit for a little while let it cool and I'll show you a pic of the finished product Okay, now that you've got the hoop, the main hoop done and taken care of, <clears throat> you're going to take your measurement or, you know, use your mat. I use this because I can see it better because I'm about blind as a bat. Um, and you're going to want to measure from the interior of this, of this side of the hoop to the interior of this side of the hoop, okay? Um, I'm sorry, I have a pointer. My fat finger is out of the way interior of this hoop, this side of the hoop, to this side of the hoop, okay? And you're going to want to actually, well, take that back, measure it to the center, center of the hoop, okay, on each side. That gives you a little room so you can do your fish mouthing on the tubing, okay? And what I used is, for that, I used the 1 16th. Now, if you look at most, most other cages will have smaller tubes as supports, um... 
just because the thicker tube is harder to bend, costs more, that kind of thing. So, you get your measurement, and this one I think was two inches if I remember correctly. Okay, no, it was an inch and five eighths, excuse me. So, what I did was I measured an inch and I think it was three quarters. And it gives me enough room to fish mouth each side of the tubing and you can stick it in there glue with a little CA glue and a little drop of um, uh, kicker or insta set this stuff here and it will stay that way don't pull the tape off yet um, leave the tape on there so it stays sturdy let it dry for a little while okay let it dry while you cut all your other parts out okay um, so after that you're going to while that's drying you're going to want to measure your forward bars your rear bars and if you're going to do an X brace you want to measure that out too and I'll get to that in a second alright guys now that you have your main hoop you have your support bar, your center bar, or crossbar in. It's all glued and it's sturdy. You're going to take and get your measurement for your rear bars. Okay? And that, let me set this up here so I can give you an idea. Wherever your main hoop is going to sit, you want to measure from there to wherever your rear bars are going to go. Okay? Especially if you're just doing an internal cage. If the cage isn't going all the way through the rear panel into the trunk, you know, um, that's extensive stuff and that's a whole nother video, alright? Um, and don't even get me started on complete cages because I haven't made it that far yet. <laughs> so, measure from your main hoop to wherever it's going to sit, okay? And I'll show you a picture of that. Okay, fish mouthing. Uh, let's get into that for a second. Alright. You have your round file. Okay. Um, to fish mouth it, all I did is you place your finger along the side of the tubing, or the rod, okay? And you just slowly start to run it across the top here and until it starts to dig in and it'll take you know a couple minutes but you just keep going keep going keep going and what I did was I rotated the file so it wouldn't build up too much and you just keep going keep getting it and you can work it back into the file as it gets thicker so you can really open that tube up or that rod up to accept the larger diameter hoop okay so you do that, alright, I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but we've got a little bit of a fish mouth going on there, okay? And that is going to butt up against your other tube, you see how well that sits in there? I don't know if you guys can see that. But it sits in there nice. That way you get a good glue surface for it. You get a lot of contact so you can get a good glue on it, okay? Alright, now that you've got those cut, you know, got them fish mouthed, um, you want to take and you angle cut the other end, okay? To whatever angle it is, just so you can get it to sit flush up against the surface that it's gluing to, okay? Um, <clears throat> that way you get a gl good glue surface here, you get a good glue surface up here on top of the hoop, alright? Alright, once you've got that glued in, oops, sorry about that, once you've got that ready, um, you're going to let it sit, you know, set it in place, 
let only glue at the top here don't glue the bottom okay you don't want to set this cage in there yet and glue it in place yet um, glue the top hit it with a little bit of inset let it sit for a little while um, you're gonna measure from the center of your hoop on each side to wherever the front bars are gonna go to if you're gonna take them to the corners like I did you can do that if they're gonna come out and then go straight down um, you can do that again you're gonna have to do the cold roll okay and um, do it that way so take your measurements okay cut those two pieces okay and do the same thing you know you fish mouth the ends that are going up against the hoop okay angle cut the opposite ends to whichever angle they're going to be to where their mounting point is and again get your glue put a couple of dots on either side um, it may require a little bit of more glue than normal um, just because some of these sometimes these tubes get finicky um, like like mine I had to put a little extra glue on it and you know if you have to use a little extra glue that's not a big deal that's what the sanding stick is for okay once it dries you can just you know run the sanding stick over it you know run the sanding stick over it at all angles just kind of clean up the dried glue and it's not that big of a deal okay um, oh and you know what I'm sorry to bring this up so late in the video you're gonna want to sand your sticks all the sticks you're gonna use uh, you're gonna want to sand them to get that perfect glue surface okay because as we all know this glue sticks better to sanded surface than it does unsanded surfaces okay all right guys um you know once you've gotten all that once you've got your main hoop done your crossbar done uh rear bars and your front bars if you're gonna do front bars if you're just you know gonna do the main hoop with a little bracing and some rear bars that's cool too it's completely up to you um me, I did a little extra bracing, okay? Um, I put a cross brace here. Uh, I put two, two more braces here. And I also did an X brace, okay? Um, this was just to add, you know, a little bit of realism to the cage. Um, I've seen a few cars. I've seen quite a few cars with cages. And uh, I'm best friends with a guy who's got uh, two degrees from Wyotech from uh, for uh, paint and body chassis fabrication and uh, high performance motors okay so this stuff kind of comes natural to him and he shares that knowledge with me so now I use it for my cars so I'm gonna share it with you but uh, yeah I mean after after the main hoop the crossbar and that everything else is up to you so get as creative as you want Alright guys, well that concludes my little uh, how I did it video on <clears throat> the uh, making a little sport cage for your model car. Um, hey you guys get creative, you know, um, take this idea, run with it, you know, do anything that comes to your head. Um, the only thing, you know, the only rule you really got to stick by, well the main rule you got to stick by is your measurements. Um, you really need to get the measurements right and the cold rolling uh, cold bending um, that's definitely something that you know you got to take your time with um, you do it all at once these styrene rods will snap um, I know I've done it plenty of times um, now I'm not the authority on this by by no means um, there are guys that are better than me at it out there uh, M1 Customs does some amazing cage work and, uh, you know, there's a few other guys out there. Um, I can't remember the names right off the top of my head. But, uh, because it's late, it's, you know, after 1 o'clock here. And, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to get this video done and squared away. So, if, uh, yeah, you guys have any questions, hit me up. You know, inbox me. Uh, leave a comment. 
you guys have my number. Uh, you can text me. Um, you guys know me on Facebook. Hit me on Facebook either way. I'll be more than happy to help you guys. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it, guys. Um, also, look at my buddy. Um, the guy I mentioned earlier who has the two degrees. <clears throat> His YouTube username is GreaseMonkey187. He's doing a street bob on a 1980 GS850 motorcycle. It's right there. Um, so he's going to do a street bob on that. He's got his intro video up. Uh, that's all he's got right now because, you know, time and everything. Time constraints, work, the kids, all that good stuff. So, but yeah, keep an eye out for him. And um, I will hit you guys on the next video. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. You catch these videos firsthand. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon on the next video. All right, guys. Big Daddy Customs. Peace.